Office for Diversity and Inclusion. Who can tell me what this is? That's right. When I had a chance to speak to you for the, the new student convocation, I forgot to tell you how to pronounce my name. So, can you think about first syllable of the water bottle? So, the bottle, ba. Second syllable, wa, ba. Okay? Want to say it together? Ba. ba. There you go. So, when you see me, don't be shy. I'll say, hey, Miss Bawa. And if you really, really can't remember that, then you can say hi, Miss Keisha, too. But, Keisha Ba. Okay, as I said, we're here for the Senate Jennings Lecture. I wanted to give you just a little bit of the history of this particular lecture. So it's named for a former Hendricks professor. His name was Dr. James Jennings. At the time of his death, Dr. James Jennings was a Cynthia Cook Center for Odyssey Professor of Education and, Hen and History here at Hendricks. Following his passing in October of 2015, the Hendricks Student Senate moved to establish an endowed fund for a lecture series with the sole purpose of providing lectures and training opportunities, opportunities on the topics for diversity. The Student Senate desires for students and student leaders to discuss diversity issues and to develop potential solutions and expects that the lecture seri series and its trainings will foster leadership development, community building, and engagement in conversations that matter to the broader Hendricks community. By bringing experts to campus, the Student Senate hopes to encourage proactive, meaningful conversations that result in action for the betterment of student associations and the community as a whole. And so I'm going to ask our student body president, Student Senate uh, President, Max Parker, to come up and he's going to introduce our speakers. And I want to say for all of our freshmen, as you know, this is a mandatory um, attendance requir required attendance event. And so you will have the opportunity to sign in after the event. So please don't leave without signing in. Hey, how's it going, y'all? All right, so when I was asked to uh, give this little introduction, um, I didn't really know much about this event, and then, I, and then um, Ms. Bawa told me, this is actually an event that you did your freshman year. I was like, I do remember that now, um, barely. But uh, however, I was surprised, I was not surprised actually, that an annual lecture was tasked with inspiring a student organization to innovatively collaborate on issues of diversity and and I was not at all surprised that it was inspired by a professor from the Education and History Department. Because after all, how can we uh, innovate without recognizing the challenges presented to us from the past, and how can we collaborate without learning from each other in the present? Uh, today's lectures come to us uh, with a great deal of experience in innovative collaboration. Hailing from our own great state of Arkansas, they have served young adult Arkansans as well as others in neighboring states throughout their professional careers. Collectively with their years of experience in gifted education, student life, and campus leadership, they've put together a truly special lecture for us. Please welcome me, welcome me in joining Rob, uh, sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, that's only 11. All right, uh, please join me in welcoming Robert Webb and Robert Bryant. like dumb people. It's hard for me. Uh, people like you have spoiled me. There is expectation that I have and I expect it from the room because as intellectual beings, when we feed off of each other and we begin to share, oh, the knowledge and the energy in the room, it goes higher and higher. And there's something that makes you want to be and that's the beauty about being with students like you, because no one had to force you to come to class. You wanted to go to class. And I think that's what we're going to have today, is a special learning opportunity. And hopefully you'll be involved, because really all we want to do is provoke thought. They don't like us. Oh, my mic is on now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
That's good. I like that. Y'all are young people. Y'all should be able to talk back to us. This is going to be a very engaging um, presentation, seminar, workshop, whatever you want to call it. And as my mentor just said, we are here to inspire you all to think differently than you have before. My father always tells me, uh, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Also, he says, in order to get something you've never had before, you have to do something you've never done before. So you all find yourselves here at Hendricks College looking for a degree, um, looking for something that you don't already possess right now. And in order to get that, you're going to have to do some things that you've never done before. So who are we? We are R&R &R Consulting. Everybody needs a little R&R &R in their lives, right? His name is Robert, and my name is Robert. And our backgrounds are in education, um, mine specifically in higher education. And how we came about, I met this young man uh, about 15, 16 years ago at Arkansas American Legion Boys State. Do we have any former Boys State delegates in here? Anyone? Yeah? All right. Don't be, I mean, raise your hand high. I mean, that's a, okay. So as a young junior counselor, Rob pulled me to the side because he saw something in me that I didn't quite see in myself. I was very active. I was kind of busy all the time. And Rob took the time to pull me to the side and speak life into me. And from that day on, we've remained close friends, and I admonish him and admire him as my big brother and as my mentor. Um, I started working in higher education about three or four years ago, and I started doing presentations in my functional area. I started in TRIO. And I started submitting proposals to present at the conferences that I started attending. And one day, I called Rob up and I said, hey, I am writing this proposal would you like to partner with me and do this presentation? And he said, sure. And our presentation got accepted, and from that, magic happened. And from that, R&R &R Consulting uh, was birthed. So that's how we came uh, to be here today. So without boring you anymore with who we are and how we got here, let's focus on you guys and talk about why we're here. Why are we here? We are here to provoke thought. Our society, our nation, is faced with a lot of issues right now. And how we respond to them has been suspect. It's been very suspect. I'm sure you've seen the headlines. There have been mass shootings. And there's an opioid crisis. I'm bothered by these things because how can you have a crisis and you know the source of the crisis, yet no one has gone to jail? Hmm. You are dying at an alarming rate from this stuff. And it saddens me that we are sacrificing our young people and everyone is silent. You mean no one is going to be held accountable? Oh, so he got 360 pills and nobody called the pharmacist or the doctor in the question. He just got these pills. And she, she did too. And still no one is being investigated or, hmm. So we have a lot of issues and a lot of people are talking, but they're not saying much at all. And that's what you have to do. I want you to become critical thinkers. I don't want you to be the average run of the mill freshman. And, now, and let me talk about it. You will hear people say, oh, you guys are just freshmen. They don't know anything, man, you know. And, and they'll cast you to the side. Don't allow that to happen. You're supposed to be here. 
You were selected to be here for a reason. You have value. You have worth. And if everybody is somebody, it must start with you today. Shifting your paradigm. How you look at each other. We're not just freshmen. You're going to change the world. Matter of fact, if you ask some of the professors, they're probably ready for some of the juniors and the seniors to leave. They need your energy. They want to see you. And so, and let me say this, stop following the crowd. If they wear pajamas to class, don't wear pajamas to class. How can you be taken seriously as a scholar? Well, it's not about what I wear. Yeah, it can be about what you wear, unfortunately. This is not a nude campus. Smile. So I think that you must be ready and prepared for this new challenge that you have, being in an environment where mom and dad, they aren't here. <laughs> well, they're on your phone. Uh, but you have a new opportunity with new people. The person that you were in high school, you don't have to be that person anymore. You can be something totally different because those friends that were in high school, they're not here. Create a new space for yourself, learning more about who you are, who you really are, who you really are. Because that's why we're here. So let's talk about this LSU incident. You might have seen it in the papers recently. It's become a viral news story. And sorry, that's not as clear as I want it to be. But this young lady was at a football game recently. Um, I think it happened on August 31st. She was at the game. And the picture kind of correlates the crowd that was there. And this young lady, who is of Chinese descent, she was at the game. And this young man started yelling to her, get the F out, Ching Chongs, to her and several of her friends. Now, she said that he berated them continuously, continuously. In a crowd of people, a stadium full, nobody said a word. One young lady came over to console them, and she is the one who took that picture. Now, she wrote and posted that on social media, and she's a student at uh, LSU, and a fellow student harassed her in this nature. <coughs> and that bothers me. That should bother me. And I have several questions. Uh, is this OK? Where were all the brave people? Sitting here in this room now, what would you do? Would you have the courage to speak up? Do you have the guts? We're living in a different time now. I understand. We're living in a different age. People, you know, I'm going to keep to myself. I'm going to mind my own business. But we let that happen. What would you want your school to do? Now, the university is involved with investigating this at this point. But even as of last night, they have almost dismissed the issue as if it didn't happen. You can read the story. I'm not making this up. So how we respond to these things, not even on a university level, but as an individual, ah, somebody, 
Is there anybody? Where is the courage? Where did you stand? We've seen it for years. It happened in the civil rights era. People finally stood up. But now we're in a different era now. Oh, Robert, those things have been passed. Oh, we're in a new day now. But why? Why? Why even now? Is there a heightened sense in regards to racial issues today? Why? How could it be? We progressed, right? We're over that. Me as a person? I'm, 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 I'm beyond it. I'm beyond it. But I don't like it. You know what? Can I, can I be real honest with you? Nigger is not my trigger. That's not going to get me. You can call me that all day. I know who I am. <laughs> I have self-worth. So that won't get me. And you have to get to the point where those things don't get you. Whether they call you fag, uh, uh, cracker, those things, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Well, that's a lie. Because they do hurt. They do sting. And they stick with you. Those bruises will go away, but those words stay with you. So what's coming out of your mouth? Think about what you're saying. Let's think. Everybody is somebody. Say that. Is somebody. Ooh, but say it like you believe it. Everybody is somebody. Everybody is somebody. So in order for this statement to be true, it is going to take some action from you. I have a question. What is the difference between the $100 bill on the left and the $100 bill on the right. Say, say it, somebody. It's $100. It, what he said, it's $100. No matter how you crumble it up, no matter how much you stomp on it, it's a hundun. You, under, you understand me? It's, it's, it's a C note. It's a Ben Frank. Am I, am I catching it? It, it, it? All right? But here's what we do in society. He just told me that it's $100 either way. But what we do in society is we look at people differently than we look at this. Because you'll try to tell me or tell somebody else because they don't look like you on the right, they don't hold the same value as you do. But you just told me that they're both $100. But yet in society, as college students, as millennials, you will look at somebody else that may have had it harder than you did, and you will determine that they're not worth as much as you are. Can I ask a question? Who determines what something is worth? Who determines the value of something? Anybody. Anyone. Anyone can determine the, who determines the value of you. But why is it that we allow what other people to think, say, and feel about us determine how we feel about ourselves? It's easier to listen to a crowd. Social media is one of our generation's greatest downfall. Let me talk to the ladies in here. Ladies, you'll post a picture on Instagram, and if it don't get the amount of likes you think it deserves, you'll take it down. What's the first thing you do after you take a picture, ladies? Do what? You, you critique yourself in the photo, and then do what? And then you delete it, or, or what do you do? Man, you add a little filter to that? Nah, I don't think that ain't going to get it. 
I need just a little bit more light in this. Uh-uh, let's take this. Take, a, take another. That's why I hate taking pictures for ladies. I hate it. <laughs> Fellas, don't, if a girl asks you to take a picture, tell her, I got something I got to do. I got to go somewhere else. Because you're going to take the picture, and this, is, and this is a habit that I form. Hey, sir, can you take this picture? Sure, ma'am, sure. Chill. Here you go. Take a look at it just in case you don't like it. I'll take it again. And you'll be there five, ten minutes trying to take a picture for somebody who has not yet accepted their own self-worth. Ouch. You can say ouch. You can say ouch. Man. But that's true. So let's not even talk about how other people view this crumbled up $100. How do you feel about yourself? I was telling Max today, I said, man, I've had one hell of a morning. Mentally. Rob said we can keep it real, right? I believe y'all will trust us a whole lot more if we kept it real. I had a rough morning. Mentally. Because can I be honest? Today, I didn't feel like I deserved to be up here speaking to you all. This isn't my first time being on a stage talking to students. But today, I felt like this crumbled up $100 bill. And I felt less than what I was worth. All because of some things that I'm battling internally. And the same for many of you. Some of you all are smiling. Some of you all are happy. And then you go to your dorm room and you're depressed. <laughs> oh, am I in somebody? Am I in y'all fields right now? Y'all, am I in? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm a, you, you, you fight. Listen, you fight so hard to keep that smile on your face because you want your friends to think, no, I'm good, I'm good. And fellas, I, I, would, I would talk about us and how we got this false sense of masculinity, but I ain't going to do it today. <laughs> how we feel like we can't be emotional, how we feel like we can't express our feelings because society say it'll make us look weak, it'll make us look homosexual, it'll make us look soft, and we don't want the women to think, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm straight, uh, yeah, yeah, what's up? <laughs> Man, you're going to have a stroke trying to keep up this facade you got going on. Man, what happened to him, man? He got high blood pressure at 18 because he's trying to keep up. He stroked out. He was stressed out because you're trying to keep up a facade that is not you. But today I had a rough day because I felt like this based off of my own experience. But if everybody is somebody, we have to learn how to value the people that are around us. Do we agree on that? One way that I can value the person next to me is I can value their viewpoint. We live in a society today that if I disagree with you, I can't disagree with you and still like you. I have to disagree with you and hate you at the same time. I do an activity called on the bus, off the bus. Some of you have probably heard of this. You say two things and whatever you, do, uh, and whatever you identify with, you move to that side of the room or that side of the bus, right? So you can do stuff like uh, hamburgers or hot dogs, right? Uh, Skittles or Starburst. And people choose whatever side they want based off how they identify with something. Let me try that in here. Real quick. No, 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 no. You don't have to get up. See, that's another thing that's wrong with y'all generation. Y'all a little lazy. Y'all a little lazy for me. We got to get up. Yeah, you got to get up. How you go to class every day? This looks like a large campus. You got to walk to class. Ain't nobody had to beg y'all to go stand in the Starbucks line. Watch this. If everybody is somebody, we have to value the viewpoints and opinions of other people. Watch this. Raise your hand if you're pro-life. Raise your hand 
if you're pro-choice. Somebody, hands down, somebody that's pro-life, tell me why you're pro-life. Yes, ma'am. Stand up, please. Listen. Okay, so you're pro-choice. Somebody that's pro... Okay, yes, sir. Stand up for me, please. Listen, I need y'all, I need y'all to listen. Okay. No, do you, do you want to expound on that? Okay. He says, at the moment of conception, it doesn't matter, that is a life. Somebody that is pro-choice, tell me why you're pro-choice. Right here. Hold on, wait a minute. Now, now, now you just saw him stand up. Are you going to sit down? Okay, no, you're good, you're good. I'm just, go ahead. Shh, listen. Okay, somebody else that's pro-life. Oh, oh, okay, I'll, 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 take you, I'll take you both, but we're gonna go ladies first. Keep standing though, keep standing though, keep, keep standing though. You good, go ahead, pro-life, why? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because we can't, we can't hear you right now because we got people talking. All right? I'm so like for myself, but that's not something that I do. I would say for whatever anyone else wants to do, that should be their decision. But it's not, like, if it's not me, then why should I make the decision for them and how their life is going to be? So you're not, so you're not devaluing, it may not be a word, but you're not devaluing someone else that's pro-choice. You're just saying, for me, uh, this is kind of how I rock. I'm not saying that you can't be this way. You're still important. You're still a person, right? Okay. You, sir. I mean, that's fine. Thank you, sir. One more person that's pro-choice, and we're going to keep moving. You, sir, right here. I Come on. So he said at the moment of conception, it's not a conscious being. We could. All right, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because I didn't want to stay here this long. I'm trying to make a point, but go ahead. Come on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Guys, listen. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, if we're valuing the people that are around us, and everybody is somebody, it's not right for me to impose my thoughts and beliefs on you. And then turn around and make it seem like you're the bad guy because you don't believe how I believe. We're talking about valuing the people around us. You do know and understand that the people that you are sitting next to do not come from the same place you come from. They didn't have the same upbringing as you had. I could easily say I'm pro-life until you run into a young lady that's raped. So you mean to tell me, not only 
does she, has, does she have to suffer through the traumatic experience of being raped? Now the child that she's going to bring into the world is going to constantly remind her of what happened to her. A year ago, two years ago, three years ago, 18 years ago, 30 years from now. Now, yes, mentally she can come out of that, right? But it'll take some work, right? It'll take some mental rehabilitation, right? Then, too, it's hard for me as a man to stand here and say, ah, women, you got to do X, Y, and Z with your body. <laughs> Once again, I'm not saying either side is right or wrong. I'm saying that every case is special. Just because somebody decided to go get an abortion, oh, she's just, she doesn't want to take care of the responsibility. We ain't going to talk about the, the hundreds of men that have gotten women pregnant and said, look, I ain't ready to be no father right now. Here we go. We're not going to talk about, we ain't going to talk about, we ain't going to talk about the men that have gone and bought Plan B's after you were irresponsible. If we're going to keep this, if we're going to keep this thing real. So the point that I'm trying to make is this. If everybody is somebody, we have to value the opinions of other people. We can't just accept where we come from and our own thought process as the law. This is how it is. Can I tell you, you're going to be wrong. And fellas, you're going to run into one of these liberal women that's, that's all about, they about womanhood, and you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. So, how can I value someone else's opinion, their presence, their experiences, if I don't first value myself? We have a lot of bandwagon people in society today. People who do no research, whatever the majority say, they just run along with it. So can I tell you, that if everybody is somebody and you're going to learn how to value other people, you got to first start with yourself. Who is the person on the left? Mowgli is from what movie? <laughs> the Jungle Book. What did Mowgli believe he was? A wolf. Why did he think he was a wolf? He was, he was raised by wolves. Does Mowgli look like a wolf? No. So why did he believe that? He was a wolf. That's what they told him. Who is that on the right? Tarzan. Where did Tarzan, uh, what movie is Tarzan from? Tarzan. Uh, I'm just asking. Y'all supposed to be smart. I'm just checking. Tarzan thought he was a what? He thought he was a gorilla. Why? Because he was raised by gorillas until he ran into Jane. And Tarzan said, wait a minute. I feel a little something different than I do when I'm with you than I do when I'm with the gorillas. Something on the inside, Jane, is telling me to send me your location. And, oh, yeah. Send me your location, Jane. I'm trying to see some. Can we just talk? Uh, uh, can we? Yeah, can we talk, Jane? Because I need to talk about where we're going from here. Mowgli and Tarzan had a moment of self discovery and self actualization. Tarzan figured out that he was not a gorilla when he ran into another human being. What's the point that you're trying to make? It's easy for me to talk about somebody else when I don't know who the hell I am. Oh, let that sink in. It's easy for me to talk about and degrade and discriminate someone else when I don't even know who I am. And that's the case with many of you. You have yet to have this moment in your life where everything about you, your thoughts, your actions, your behaviors are organic to who you truly are. How many people in here had above a 30 on your ACT? Raise your hand. 
Okay? Watch this. Although all of you all are supreme intellectual specimens, all of your journeys to Hendricks College were not the same. Let me ask this question. How many people in here come from a single parent home? Put your hand down. How many people in here have ever had to be on government assistance? Put your hand down. So you chose to come to this prestigious university. They selected you. You selected them. Everybody that's walking around here hasn't all had a prestigious life. Some people had to fight, crawl, scratch to get here to this moment. And what a detriment to them when you treat them like this dollar bill on the left side, this hundred dollar bill on the left side. You don't know what the person next to you had to do to sit in this seat that you're sitting in right now. And sometimes, we judge people and we handle people because we simply don't even know who we are. You've grown up in a culture, in your own uh, neighborhood, your own city, that probably didn't have a whole lot of black people in it. Or you maybe grew up in a city that didn't have a whole lot of white people in it. So that has formed your opinion of people who don't look like you. How do you know what a book is about? Can I submit to you that some of you all aren't picking up the book to even read it? You're just looking at it and judging it based off what you see? And you miss out on great relationships, great friendships, great brotherhoods, great sisterhoods, all because you never take the time to stop and read the book. You never take the time to self-actualize. So, if everybody is somebody, the first thing we want to leave with you today is you got to value the people around you. Somebody give me another way you can value somebody that's around you. I told you you have to value the viewpoints and opinions of others. I'm not saying you have to accept it and take it on as your own, but you have to find some type of value in it because maybe they offer you a different viewpoint. I guarantee you when I said, well, uh, what happens if the young lady was raped? I bet some of y'all didn't even think about it that way. And that's why it's important to get to know the people around you. Quickly, somebody give me a couple more things that you can do to value the people around you right now. Yes, ma'am. Respect people's emotions. Elaborate on that quickly for me. Mm-hmm. Someone else. Yes. Take a general conservative effort to be like, hey, I want to understand. I want to know why. That's good. You, sir, last one. Listen. Listen. Real simple. Listen. Moving on to the next point. Brother Rob. So, it's time for you to speak up. Being involved, being engaged. I said earlier, people will treat you differently because you're freshman. Paul, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to Timothy, he told him something very significant that I love. He said, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example. Be an example. That's the challenge for us today, being examples. You may not want to go to the party and drink with everybody else. You may need to study for that test that I'm going to give. Are you prepared? This is a different world. You're all smart, but the thing that I have to tell my smart people is not to forget 
to study. My challenge to you is to read, read, read. I'm looking for the next people who will help us discover the cure for cancer. I don't want you to be like everybody else. I want you to have fun. I want you to kick it. I want you to party. That's part of life. But when it's time to buckle down, and the time is now, don't wait till the end of the semester. Your teacher should know you. Go establish and, and form a relationship with them now. Start raising your hand in class. Take the courage. Be courageous. Say something. Stand up. Speak. Open up your mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? We need to hear from you. You have something valuable inside of you, and we're waiting to hear from you. We're waiting. You were chosen for a reason. They said no to some people. Everybody that applied to Hendricks, they didn't get in. So you have purpose. There's a reason for you being here. And that's why we want to hear your voice. We want you to speak up, speak out. Because sometimes you need to be heard. I dare you. I dare you. And, and as, as far as it relates to gender, huh? Let's begin to learn and understand each other. Guys, there's a rape culture that happens on college campuses. As a family of freshmen right here, let's agree that this won't happen, not on our watch. You change the dynamics of your culture by being here. Now I want you to do that. Step up. Don't be afraid. Don't let them punk you. Not for something that you really feel deeply inside in your heart about, that you love. Come on. Somebody needs you. Check on the people around you. This is your community now. You never know what someone is going through. And if everybody is somebody, I got to start being my sister's keeper, my brother's keeper. No, you can't keep everybody, because first you got to take care of yourself. But in taking care of myself, I'm taking care of you too. Because I got to check in on you, because there's a, a struggle going on. Uh, there's challenges. And we got to stand up for each other. Community. You have a beautiful campus here. Oh my goodness. Wow. And, and because of how smart you are, how high achieving you are, I have a great expectation for you to do great things. And speaking up is just the beginning. So I want you to use your voice. All right, we'll go to the next slide. My time is limited. Go for it. So he talked about speaking up. So the first person you need to speak up for is yourself. The second person you need to speak up for are the people around you, the people in this room, OK? We started off by talking about an incident at LSU where a student was berated and and degraded at a football game in front of other students, and other students just sat around and watch. Can I tell you, if everybody is somebody, it is going to require you to speak up for those who maybe can't speak up for themselves. 
It's going to take some courage. It's going to take you stepping outside of that circle of friends who really don't mean you no good. That's a whole other topic. Because you don't want to look cool, but you want to do the right thing. Where are the people who would rather sacrifice their popularity to do the right thing? Dr. King spoke up for a lot of people. The abolitionists during the slavery days who were not black spoke up. Those who helped on the Underground Railroad that were not black spoke up. So that lets me know I don't necessarily have to look like the person that's struggling to speak up for them. It's going to take a courageous effort. So if everybody's somebody, we have to value the opinions and the viewpoints of other people. We got to speak up. And the last thing that, that seems to always trip up America or society is seeing and believing beyond the stereotype. Now, for the sake of time, I want to walk you through an exercise I do at Arkansas American Legion Boy State. And can I tell you, it may be a little bit uncomfortable, but sometimes it takes us to get in place of discomfort for us to do something and see things differently. So at Boy State, I do a breakout session called Racism 101. And we examine stereotypes, where they came from. Why do you even believe this? So here's what I do. I write every nationality on the board that's represented in this room. So we'll do black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Mexican, Middle Eastern, everything. And what I'll have my participants do is this. I have them raise their hands, and I have them give me a stereotype of an opposite race. Some of y'all are like, woo, it'd probably get real heated in that room. No, 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 no. Because we're very respectful, but at the same time, I want us to be real because the only thing that we do is we just keep putting dirt over something. We never dig it up and examine it and figure out why we got here. So I'll have white participants raise their hand and they'll be like, well, all black people like fried chicken. And we'll write it on the board. And, and, and you're laughing but because, and it's funny, and it's funny. And, and as we keep going deeper and deeper into this, more people start raising their hand and giving stereotypes. So, of course, on the Hispanic one, they'll say, well, all Hispanics are illegal immigrants. They own lawn care services. All black people don't know who their daddy is. Black people are athletic. White people are racist. White people don't know how to season no food. <laughs> I'm just telling you what comes out of these. And some of the stuff that come out of their mouths is, is I just laugh. All Asian people are smart. <laughs> so, you know, all, all Middle Eastern people own gas stations that are terrorists. So, we amass this big list of stereotypes. And you know what I do? I walk down the list, right? So I'll say, how many people in this room are intelligent and very smart? All of y'all should raise your hands because you're here at Hendricks College, right? So she's like, no, like, no, I'm really not, no, I'm not smart. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are, right? How many people in this room are athletic? All of them. Have rhythm. All of that, right? I already asked the question about how many people in this room came from a single parent home. The point of that whole exercise is to show them that the things that we believe separate <coughs> us are really things that we all have in common. But because we don't take time to break through those things, we can't value Everyone. I tell this story all the time, and, 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 and I'll let Rob close us out, because I want you guys to, to see what happens when you don't break through the stereotypes, right? I went to Arkansas High School in Texarkana, Arkansas. My mother and father are both educators, 
My dad is a retired school principal, and my mom is a retired school counselor. And my daddy didn't play. He was a pastor, still is a pastor. So growing up in my household, yeah, we didn't play. He didn't play. So I, I wasn't sagging. I, I had good manners. I said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. That was non-negotiable in Pastor Webb's house. Non-negotiable. So when I went to school, the black girls didn't want to talk to me. You know why? Because they said, well, you act white, you talk white, you dress white. And I'm like, so you mean to tell me because my subjects and my verbs agree that, okay, all right, all right. So, so we're talking about breaking through the stereotypes. I just showed you how people that look like me discriminated against me, right? So quite naturally, since the black girls didn't want to talk to me, who did I talk to? Yeah, I had a girlfriend named Lauren. <laughs> Love Lauren. It was my high school sweetheart. We dated for a couple years. Her folks did not like me. Why? Right. Did they take the time to get to know me? No. Because they would have known, if they would have knew who my parents were, they would have said, oh, okay, he, he's not like all the others. I'm just being real. So Lauren and I dated. I went to college. She was still in high school. We broke up shortly after I went to college. Shortly after Lauren and I dated, Lauren ended up getting pregnant by another black guy. I remember going to the hospital to see Lauren because she and I were still really good friends. I went to go see Lauren to check on her, and her dad stops me in the hallway. And he's like, Robert, I just want to apologize to you. And I'm, I'm like, OK, what's going on? He was like, well, you know, I never took the time to get to know you. I never took the time to, to, to see what type of individual you really were, and I'm sorry. And I said, that's cool. The next thing he said hurt me. Because he went on to say, Robert, I wish the baby was yours. Because now he saw what type of individual. Am I perfect? No. Was I what he thought I was? Absolutely not. He thought I was a thug. He thought I was, you know, going to get his daughter pregnant and then just leave the baby on her, right? That's why you have to be careful that what you believe about other people doesn't visit your own house. All because he didn't take the time to get to know who I was. Can I tell you in this room, if everybody is somebody to you, you need to take the time to get to know people that don't look like you? No, get to know them for real. It's easy for me to assume that Somebody that looks Asian is from China or Asia. They could be American born. They could be adopted. You never know. So if everybody is somebody, you gotta value everybody's opinions and viewpoints. If everybody is somebody, you have to speak up. And the last thing you need to do is, you gotta start seeing beyond the stereotypes. You gotta start believing what people are based off what you know about them because you've taken time to get to know them, okay? This right here is Hendrick's mission statement. Hendrick's College cultivates empathy, creativity, self-understanding, rigorous inquiry, informed deliberation, and active learning across, lib across the liberal arts toward the development of the whole person through engagement that links the classroom with the world and a commitment to diversity, inclusion, justice, and sustain, sustainable living that Hendricks community inspires students to lead lives of accomplishment, integrity, service, and joy. Can I tell you that if you don't believe that everybody is somebody, you cannot be upholding this mission statement right here? You chose to come to Hendricks College. 
You chose to come here and be among a diverse group of people. So it is your responsibility to get out there and learn. Gain some cultural competency and currency here. Because it'll make you a better human being moving forward. Brother Rob. Repeat after me. Hendricks College has a mission. And they've selected me to help them complete it. That's huge. That's big. World changing. That's what we're looking for. That's who you are. Guys, we've run over time. We would love to talk to you more. We're, we're actually funny people. We're really funny. We can make you laugh all day. But because of the serious nature of where our society is, this is our opportunity to tap into you and ask you to help change the world. It starts with you. One person can make a difference. The difference we make today may be what saves tomorrow. You guys have been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. We're glad that you got invited us to come and give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you.